How you doing, Teresa? I'm okay, Mike. Uh, with the a lot of talk about effort and execution. Sure. Is maybe a bigger problem the challenge that you've got so many undrafted players that you're having to lean on on right now? Well, I mean, though sometimes um, whether it's youth or experience, draft, whatever it may be, those are, you know, we we just have to make sure that we're, you know, doing our job, that we're taking advantage of the opportunities, and that we're not missing them. And sometimes, you know, whether that's on defense and. You know, we're close or we give up a play. You know, we lose leverage. Um, and we'll go ahead and answer it, see who it is. Is there anything important? Okay, tell her hello. Why? Um, is that we're just, you know, we, we have to be able to make sure that we're not uh, missing opportunities. And so, you know, we've, we've played with, uh, you know, undrafted. Everybody that's here you know, is expected to do their job, and we have trust in them and, you know, have earned the right to play, whether uh, that's their first opportunity in, in TK or, you know, Andrew Rupchich or, you know, Eric Garrar or right on down the line. When, when you've been hurt in the past, you've brought guys in who've been able to help you. But when you're not hurt, it seems like you're reluctant to, to go get people. Like, what? Why aren't? Why isn't there more churning of the back end? Oh, of the we've worked, Yeah, we've had plenty of workouts, and um, you know, I, I probably um, don't want to put a number on it, but you know, we we added uh, you know Kayvon Wallace. We've signed um, you know other guys. We've brought up guys from the practice squad. We've had worked out guys. We've uh, added you know added players you know throughout. I don't have the exact number, but. I mean, I think every week we've had, you know, workouts and uh, just signed an offensive lineman, you know, last week. So, I mean, I think we're, we're continuing to look uh, and have workouts and bring guys in, and I think we'll continue to do that. Inside linebacker in particular, between Jack and Monty, are you satisfied with what you're getting there? And is it not possible that there's a solution outside the building who could give you better than you're getting from that? Um, I don't think either of those, you know, I don't think they were an issue uh, yesterday, you know, by no means perfect, but um, I mean, we'll continue to, to have workouts and bring guys in and, you know, and take a look. So, I mean, I don't think that's ever been something that we're afraid to do. What, uh, Mike, after we're kind of watching film yesterday, maybe what bothers you the most? Maybe what's something you feel good about? Well, the X plays, you know, defensively, we'll always. Um, you know, end up getting you. Played a lot of really good snaps. Played a handful of ones that weren't very good. Um, you know, some good plays down in the red zone to get some stops. Had some good stops on third down. Didn't have very good rush lanes. You know, a couple times on a quarterback. Um, you know, that would be something there. You know, offensively, we we weren't able to run the ball efficiently. We had too many negative play runs. Hit some you know, hit some eight or nine yarders, hit some cool plays. Um, you know, they you know didn't do a very good job in in the play action pass uh, game and, and their their pressure in that regard. You know, to where we could you know move the ball downfield and you know we had too many drops yesterday. When you look at the way Will Levis has kind of been hit so many times the last couple of weeks, but mm -hmm. then he continues to come back. He stands in the pocket. What have you learned from him through that through that experience? Well, I you know I think that uh, you know, anytime you have a quarterback that that has shows that type of toughness and is willing to stand in there and you know not stare at the rush, you know, I think everybody you know appreciates that and, and values that. And that's not the plan. That's not the goal. Nobody wants that to happen. Um, you know, I've said this to our team. You know, since I've been here, you know, it's, you know, when somebody misses a block or or doesn't go to the right ID or the right linebacker, it's it's not the seven yards you know, on a sack or a four yards on a run that that bothers me. It's the fact that somebody could get hurt. You know, if we don't block somebody and we're handing the ball off to Derek or or Tajay, um, that that's what bothers me. You know, we can make up the four yards. I, I know somehow, some way. It's just I don't want to see players get hurt, whether that's the quarterback. Uh, the running back or, or anybody involved. And, you know, just like, you know, if we throw a, 
two-man concept out there between, let's say, Chris Moore and Nick Westbrook that we did, you know, fairly well. It wasn't like a 30-yard gain. It was a first down that was probably nine or ten yards. But, you know, Chris's job is to, to protect Nick and, and go and make sure that he's, you know, not getting drilled the second that he catches it. You, you see that, you know, throughout the league and in college football or, you know, on a bubble. You know, the same way as that we, you know, flip it out there to Tajay on third down. We've got three guys that are that are blocking. And Tajay is comfortable enough to catch it and know that, you know, the next guy that's free is the post safety. And so that that's important to me. So to to your question is we believe in Will's toughness and, and we also believe that that we don't need to get it. We don't need to challenge it as much as we have. How would that challenge his development as a player? Like, you know, some of these young quarterbacks, they go out there and they get beat up and, and it alters the, the way. Yeah, no, I mean, his, I mean, he's texting, he's texting with, with Tim last night. He's meeting with, uh, you know, Tim and Charles this morning, um, you know, about where to go with football and about, you know, late in the game and, uh, you know, ball placement on, on certain things and, and zone coverages. And, you know, I don't see, you know, any, any discouragement. I, I, but I, you know, we, we have to continue to, to protect them and, and de develop them and, and have them help us and let them, you know, throw the football, which, you know, he did at times. And, you know, we, we left some meat on the bone there, you know, by, by not making some plays for him. There are examples, Mike, of, of guys, young guys, promising guys, getting hit a lot early in their career and it kind of having a bearing on their long-term career in terms of making them gun shy or, or whatever. Do you have any concerns? I, I don't, but I, you know, that's something that has happened in the past and, you know, whoever our quarterback is, um, you know, we need to, we need to protect him. I, we, we all understand that for every reason that I just mentioned, um, Prior to, so no, I don't don't have any concern uh, about that. Uh, but but I, again, I don't want to challenge the the idea. How hard is it to evaluate his performance, not just yesterday, but his evolution now that he's the quarterback when he's under the duress that he was? I, mean, I again, we try to you know evaluate uh, ball placement, you know, pocket presence. You know, got out of the pocket, extended a play, and hit Kyle down the sidelines. Um, stepped up in the pocket, threw some passes that, you know, were caught, threw some that were dropped, and, you know, had some that were, you know, off target. Um, so I think you can still evaluate it. Um, you know, you can evaluate his ability to, to get the protection uh, in the right direction. And, uh, you know, no, knowing when to, to save, you know, take care of the football, get rid of it, uh, and, and also not put himself in harm's way. How much of the outside the pocket? Just you, have you been satisfied with how much he's moved and used his athleticism, or do you kind of want to see him make some more plays outside the pocket? I mean, I think that that's just something that, you know, will will come. You know, I think that his uh, Will's eyes are, are downfield. I think that he can, you know, scramble. You know, he also has to, you know, know when he is scrambling and when to get down and, you know, take care of himself. So when I think the opportunity presents itself, I think it's there. Um, you know, I think he's just keeping his eyes downfield, trying to trying to work from the pocket. How much of the offensive line uh, problems causing you to not be able to do – do as much as you want to do or limiting any any of the play calls in certain situations or parts of the game plan? I mean, I don't think it's limited us. It's, you know, sometimes in the, in the play action pass game, and I wouldn't put it all on, you know, the offensive line, right? Some of those things are backs are involved and, and tight ends are involved. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's all of us, you know, it's all of us when, when, when there's pressure or there's uh, blitzers and we have to understand that, you know, instead of being able to build those combination blocks, you know, we're there, you know, teams may run somebody through and, and peel us out of some of those combinations to where then we've got to straighten back up and, and, and take the, the backer, you know, so they don't have a, you know, a clear shot or the, you know, the tight end has to be able to, to come back and, 
and pick one of those up and you know allow us not to have self-inflicted wounds where we're you know letting guys into the pocket or we're, we're tripping our own guys or the quarterbacks too flat right there's all these one times that this happened this happened that happened you know leads to to negative plays is there ever a point where as the season unfolds you say to yourself or you and the staff say to yourself we overestimated what that guy could do we we've got to make major adjustments or you know judging judging the personnel side of things um Maybe I don't understand your question, uh, but I think we're always trying to make changes going forward each week that we, based on you know, who we're playing, you know, what we have, who's available, uh, what the game plan is, you know, and, and is there somebody else that has earned the opportunity or earned the right? I, I think we always try to do that. Uh, do you, have, you ever look at a guy and say, we thought he could do X when we brought him in, and he can't do X? It's become clear to us. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's always, you know, you think, you know, when you look at, you know, player acquisition, I think that you have vision, you know, for players on what they've done or what they will do or, you know, not getting into the specifics, but I think that's what happens when you, when you look at players that, you know, coming out of the draft or coming from other teams. It's like, okay, this is what he's done for them. You know, what do you think they can do for us? You know, do you think that it's opportunity based and will they improve? Um, or uh, this is what this person is and, and we, you know, they're consistent in that, you know, week in and week out. To that point, where do you feel like this offseason maybe you and Rand maybe miscalculated on the offensive line? Yeah, um, I think there's been too much said, you know, about that. You know, particular spot. I mean, I think that, you know, Rand and I and, and, and Chad and A Rob and the coaching staff, like, we'll, we'll focus on, you know, personnel and player acquisition when we get there. Um, right now, it's focusing on, you know, getting a meeting that has the corrections and, you know, moving forward here to Jacksonville and, you know, what we have. And so, you know, I don't think that it's, you know, a calculation or anything with regards to, to that. We just have to make sure that, you know, pieces are there and they know what to do and that we're we're able to protect based on, you know, the matchups and, and what it is each week. The quick pressure in the quarterback's face throughout eight games, nine games, which, what should we be focusing on? Oh, you guys, I'm not going to tell you guys how to do your job. You guys... Just, I'm just going to answer the questions. I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. Where does the left tackle situation stand? With, yeah, uh, Dillard's Dillard in concussion Dillard. Pro protocol. Um, uh, Dylan, you know, finished the game there and you know, moved around. And Dylan, you know, admittedly wasn't uh, up to the standard that that we need. And he's played some some good snaps for us. Um, you know, Jalen Duncan is available to, to potentially, you know play or compete for an opportunity and uh, you know a couple guys on the practice squad with that pressure that, that's coming you know from your perspective are you seeing receivers cut their route short and also like wills the clock shortening because of that pressure um no i mean i don't think that you know i mean there's times where i think the clock needs to speed up but i don't think he's uh he's rushing it you know i think that's just a testament to his toughness and um you know just you know, missed some blocks, drop dropped some passes, had some mental errors, you know. So it wasn't, uh, you know, then had some had some good plays too. You know, we did had good first drive, and negative plays again down in the red zone, missed opportunities. You know. That screen that, that went the distance there. What, what is Rice's role there? Should he be heading in towards the running back? No, that you know it's. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I wish, you know, wish Harold would have got in there and blitzed sooner and come underneath and allowed Monty uh, to scrape around the edge. Um, and probably that's, that was the design of it. Uh, Monty probably would have taken the, the pass from him. If not, I wish that Aziz hadn't turned and run with number three and played with a little better vision. I wish that um, 
you know, we, we could have got him down. I wish, you know, Amani had a, a good hit on the lineman. I wish he, you know, wouldn't have given himself up one for one. Maybe try to, you know, stay on his feet. Christian Fulton could have stayed alive and Elijah Molden wouldn't have come under. And, uh, and we could have gotten him down. But that's pretty much everybody there on a nutshell. And I don't mean can you sure. ask a force? You're here. You can always ask. Thank you you don't, don't have to ask if you can ask a in question. A, in an accusatory way. I mean, oh, I'm it's, sure. It's okay. I'll, and I, I'm serious. <laughs> Just from watching the TV copy, were you happy with Travis Gibson's effort on that screen pass? Uh, no. I mean, I don't, I don't think Travis was running as fast as he could. I don't think Roger from the backside. But I'm trying to think Travis was... Travis was dropping, and so he was on the backside. Um, you know, again, I don't think anybody's effort was, was good enough. Anytime that they, you know, gain yards or the quarterback, you know, fumbles the ball by himself, and you know, we've got some, too many guys standing there and watching that, assuming that, that he's down or assuming that somebody else is going to make the play. And it's, you know, you can never um, assume, and that's why we talk about finishing longer than the guy with the ball and playing full tilt at a tackle. And then when they are tackled, you know, that, that's when you can come out. So, again, this is not going to be every single play. There's a lot of great efforts in there. There's also, you know, efforts that, you know, you're going to wish that you had back in, in a long, hot game with, you know, none of those are excuses. It's just sometimes that's how it is. Yesterday you said not to confuse effort with execution. Uh, Today uh, you uh, said there's some questionable efforts. Um. Again, that's a statement, Paul, and so I'll, if you could just ask the question. Yesterday you said that effort wasn't an issue, it was execution. Today you're saying that there were some questionable efforts. Those two things don't jive. Can you help me understand? Um, you, in the course of 70 plays, um, I mean, I wouldn't say that we played with bad, bad effort. You know, there's always going to be some outliers and – you know, the ability to, to take, you know, things that I say and, you know, how I interpret it however you want to interpret. Um, I don't think that the effort on the 43-yard play was the reason um, for, for the touchdown. It's always going to be, you know, to think that you're going to have 11 guys on every play you know, with 100% effort, like that doesn't – it just doesn't happen. You can watch every single tape from – every league of every game like do i think we play hard yeah do i think we quit no um did, did we play well enough and coach well enough no uh, they hit a play um you know they hit an x play and uh you know that's it that was unfortunate the teams that you've coached here in the past have found an identity in things like winning the turnover battle winning the rushing attack you know being tough on the road physicality Ten weeks into this year, you guys haven't done those things. What makes this team different from the teams that you coach? Every before? team is different. Every every year, every team is different. Every season is different. So you know, I don't want to, you know, compare and contrast each and every year. We're focused on, you know, what this particular team needs to do better, what it needs to do better in a hurry, and what it can uh, eliminate uh, to to help us start winning. When you look at the Back position. How much of their job is to demand more from the ten guys around them? And if, if it is a big part of it, how difficult is that for a rookie? Well, I don't know. I've never been a rookie quarterback, um, but I think that the quarterback, their their play and their, uh, you know, I don't know if it's a demand or inspire or, you know, I've always felt like. You know, when you're in the huddle and they call the play, you, you feel confident about the way that it's called and that, that it's going to be successful and that, that they fix problems and they fix formations and they say, hey, you know, make sure you do this and, and I'm going to throw you the football. And, you know, those are all things that happen at, you know, at the quarterback position. How did, Chance, how did Chance hurt himself? He hurt himself in pregame warm-ups. Mike, with the game in Jacksonville, one more road game, but a divisional game, how much of this is an opportunity to try to fix a couple things at once? The road game. Sure. Games, I mean, it's so. just about, you know, it's about one game. It's about focusing on this week. It's not about, you know, our record and things like that because that's not going to help. Um, 
it is what it is. That's not going to change. And so, you know, we have to change um, behavior. We've talked about the only day that matters is is the test day, is, is when we go out there and we can ask questions and we can walk through and we can practice and, and we can get it. Uh, but until we go out there and we show it and put it on tape, then that's all that matters. So it is a great opportunity. Downfield for quite a bit, just as he has the first two games. But kind of productivity has gone down in the past couple of weeks. Is that a matter of defenses? Who's that? Will still throwing downfield quite a, quite a bit. Is that a matter of defenses adjusting to to him the last couple of weeks after that that great start? You know, we, I, and I told you we dropped five passes. So start there. Um, you know, then it took some shots. I think late in the game, which. They're back there, and we probably could have, you know, dumped it off to to Tajay or you know somebody. But he, you know, tried to throw the ball downfield. We're down two scores. Kyle, any more time? Phillips. I'm sorry. Kyle Phillips is he earning more time? Yeah, I mean, you just have to understand kind of Kyle and skill set. Um, you know, he plays for us on third down, plays a little bit on first and second. Um, you know, he's got a you know a skill set, and then we just have to be able to marry that with. With the other stuff that we're doing um, and, and the routes or the plays or the calls that we have, you know, threw him a, threw him a screen, had a nice gain, a great effort. And we should, you know, make sure you guys evaluate um, the effort uh, on, that, on that play to Kyle um, while we're grading effort. And, um, you know, probably needs to catch the one. Will through him. Will's probably got to take a little bit of steam off of it, but. You know, those are good plays for Kyle. It turns into, you know, kind of punt returns, those little screens, and then you know, he's been showing up a little bit more at a you know, great play on third down. How confident are you <clears throat> with the combination of players that you have and coaches that you guys can get to the answers on figuring out how to get the offensive line to allow the offense to get in sync? Yeah, I mean, I'm very confident, you know. That's... It's what our job is here. We're here to fix problems, and uh, none of us have been good enough at any at any position at any level. Um, you know, so that that's our job. That's that's what I'm going to do, and uh, I know that's what uh, that's what our team's going to do. And so we'll give ourselves a chance. We'll get a plan together, and you know, get back to work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Mike. Mike. You missed a call. Thanks. Confidence level on the offensive side of the ball right now. Uh, you know, started out yesterday holding the ball, moving it, uh, and then the red zone just seems to be a brick wall when you guys get down there. It, it, can you pin it on any one area at this point? Um, no. In terms of confidence, you know, we have a lot of confidence. We're able to move the ball really well, and um, you know, we just make a few too many mistakes. We we hurt ourselves, and you know, once we are able to fix those mistakes, you know, I feel like we're gonna have a really good offense. As receivers, you know, you're running your route. You know that the pressure is coming. How tough is it for you to, to fight that urge to, like, cut route short and just speed everything up knowing, you know, how the pressure is coming? Yeah, you know, um, sometimes you're going to have to just knowing that, um, if they're bringing a lot of pressure, you're going to have to cut it short and you just have a timer go off in your head that, you know, okay, it's, it's time to, to break this route off and get open. Is that something that you and, and, and Will, can, like, is that an understanding? Yeah, it's a, definitely an understanding, you know, just through the flow of the game. You know, some teams, they want to heat it up a little bit. You're going to know, you know, maybe I'm not going to get 16, cut off around 14, just speed your routes up a little bit. Kyle, what would you credit your uptick in production of the last couple of weeks to? Um, you know, just the coaches giving me opportunity. I would say, you know, I definitely didn't start this year off very well. and um, But luckily, you know, they the coaches stayed in there with me, kept working with me and um, giving me more and more opportunities and just, uh, just taking advantage of them. Do you have to fight, I don't know, lack of confidence or just the frustrations of obviously the injury last year and the slow start this year? How did you stay in it so when this opportunity came, you were able to take advantage of it? Yeah, and no, I was um, <laughs> very frustrated, but, um, you know, luckily I have a great wife back home who's always keeping my head up and um, just great teammates, great coaches, just uplifting me and, uh, you know, just making sure I'm just keep pushing forward. You like have taken full advantage of those. I mean, it's not like you're getting a ton of snaps, but the mm -hmm. production's been pretty high you think you're really taking advantage of, of the chances you're yeah um definitely think I'm taking advantage of it. you know every every time I watch film you know there's a few plays I wish I would have done a little bit different so um like to make a little more plays but uh, overall I feel like I'm taking advantage of it how much able to focus on receiver full-time and not working as much on special teams helped at all with that production stuff I wouldn't say it's helped too much you know I mean I guess 
I'm still preparing back there as if I'm a starter, you know, in case something happens, you know, I got to stay ready. So in terms of preparation, I feel like it's just all pretty much the same. See the Monday and Tuesday work that you got uh, with Will, getting him ready to, you know, take live reps that he missed in camp. How much did that help your rapport with him in terms of the connection? Yeah, it's been huge just working with Will and even just staying after practice a couple of times, just getting reps, just making sure we're on the same page turning time, in terms of timing, you know, each receiver runs different. So it's it good to get um, reps with him and, you know, him seeing how I run routes, how I come out routes and everything like that. What's he like in the huddle as far as poise and kind of leading the team? Yeah, very poised, um, very confident and just, you know, really takes command of the huddle. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming in. You guys are trying to find that balance. Sometimes, you know, the, the run has been getting you guys, and then, like, you had a game Sunday where you, where you stopped the run, mm -hmm. and there's some more X plays that probably you, you like. Is, is it difficult finding that balance where you can, where the defense can do a good job against both? Yeah, it is. I think, you know, every week is different. Every opponent we face is different, and they have different, you know, strengths and weaknesses. And, and we knew, like, when the Buccaneers are going to throw it deep, they're a vertical passing team, and, and we, you know, we wanted to stop the X plays, you know what I mean, and, and limit them in points, and they ended up getting a few. Um, but, I mean, I think we look at every week differently. You know, it's – and when we are clicking on both sides, you know, at that point, like, we got to – once we are clicking on both sides, we got to go out there and force more turnovers and affect the ball, you know, pass breakups, all that stuff. to – not pointing fingers and, and having this thing unravel on you guys at three and six. Um, personal accountability, at, at least for me, like look at the film and be very critical of myself, which I always have been ever since I was little. Um, and really just wanting to be coached. You know what I mean? I, I want to be coached really bad. And because um, that's the only way I know I'm going to get better personally. And I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't think we're we're you know we're a team that that points fingers like that. You know, I don't. I wouldn't want to be a part of an organization organization that does that. You know, especially when when times are getting tough. So um, you know, I, I've always appreciated the guys in, in the locker room and my teammates because because of their character. So I, I we haven't really you know we haven't had too much of that going on. Yeah, was yesterday. You kind of just chalk those up to the Bucks hitting you guys in tough coverages that they exploited, or was there something different you guys could have done in the back end to kind of put a lid on those? Uh, I mean, I mean, they, they, at the end of the day, it comes down to them, them making plays, and, and we couldn't, you know what I mean? No matter what the call is, um, you know, we're the, we're the ones who have to go out there and actually execute it. Um, so I can't say it's it's this or that, you know, I don't, I don't really want to get into it. Um, you know, they have some really good receivers, veteran, veteran receivers on the other side of the ball, and we knew um, that they would test us deep. Did you think on the, on the screen that, that went for the TD, Elijah, what turned that into such a, you know, that, that a play that looked like it might be a smaller game turned into such a big mm. I mean, I think they caught us under pressure. Um, I think it was a good play call. And then and then from that point on, like, I know I got to get a, I got to do a better job getting the, try to get the ball turned back around. And, you know, I have a blocker right in front of me. I can kind of buy, maybe I can buy time for everyone else. Um, and, and, you know, people on the back end can kind of, like, stall and, and hope everyone else can get to the party. That's good. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you, Elijah. Thank you.